What do you think is the worst outfit you've ever worn? As tastes and fashions have changed over the years, the folks at Marvel and DC have tried to keep their characters feeling current by redesigning their costumes from time to time. Unfortunately, this is not an exact science, and for every great new look, there's usually at least three bad ones. I'm Andrew Boyd, and today on Top 10 Nerd, we will be looking at the top 10 worst superhero redesigns. Number 10, Nightfall Batman. When Batman had his back broken by Bane in the infamous Nightfall story arc, he was replaced by the vigilante Asriel, who took it upon himself to redesign the Batsuit. Now, Batman's look has remained relatively consistent over the years, usually consisting of a grey bodysuit with a blue or black cape and mask. The only real variance over the years has been the black undies, the bat emblem, and the length of his ears. So any changes Asriel was going to make were going to really stand out. The redesign featured intense shoulder pads, a more armoured look, as well as claws, and an overabundance of pouches. My personal favourite part of this mess is the strange fins coming out of his legs. The entire point of the Nightfall arc was to explore a classic hero like Batman's place in a 90s setting, where readers were gravitating more towards extreme anti-heroes like the Punisher. So the over-the-top nature of this costume is very much intentional, which is why it's ranked at the bottom of this list. Number 9, Daredevil's Armored Suit. Daredevil is a character who has managed to have a lot of good redesigns throughout the years. His original yellow and red suit was fine, but was improved upon when he was given his iconic red suit. Even his prototype suit featured in Frank Miller's Man Without Fear run is somehow iconic despite its simplicity. But when looking at his various looks from over the years, the worst in my opinion is his armoured suit. It's not horrible by any stretch, but between the red on black chest pieces and the various metal plates that make his shoulders look like the vents of an air conditioner, the whole thing just feels a bit busy. This redesign was done in order to make it more convincing that Daredevil could take on stronger supervillains, but having read stories where he's taken on villains in both this outfit and the red suit, it doesn't really make much of a difference, so may as well stick with the classic suit. Number 8, 90s Thor. Okay, so the 90s were a rough time to be a superhero apparently. The industry was pushing the stories in really weird directions, and in an effort to appeal to a modern audience in time for the approaching new millennium, it seemed like every classic hero was getting a weird new redesign. Of the 90s redesigns, very few of them stuck around, and that's a good thing, especially for Thor. Despite his original look being pretty clean and adaptable to a modern style, this somehow managed to take everything that worked about the original design and make it awful. In a move that is usually only reserved for female superheroes, the decision was made for Thor's midriff to be exposed, and for him to be given a giant leather cod piece. At least I think it's leather. It's the same colour as his boots and shoulder pads, so that's probably right. I can understand how 90s Marvel would think that getting rid of the wing helmet would be the right call, but the weird faceless mask with the long flowing locks is a bit much. It's a bad look, but it does kind of draw attention to how ridiculous many female superhero designs are by applying the same aesthetic to a male figure. Number 7, Raven's New 52 Look. Raven's original look is brilliant in its simplicity. One piece with a cool belt and a long flowing cloak with a large hood that covers her eyes. It's great. They eventually changed it to give her pants. Totally understandable. Not complaining. I like wearing pants too. But when the character was redesigned for the new 52, the look was altered for a new generation of fans, which is code for made worse. This overdesign decided to really lean into the bird theme, with her cloak being given a more feathered look. Kind of an odd choice, but I can get on board with a more detailed cape. What I can't wrap my head around is the weird feather mask covering her face. Not only is it ugly and distracting, but it also has no eye holes. Now, obviously she can see, but the lack of any eyes makes it really hard for the character to emote. The eyes are the window to the soul. Think of how expressive a character like Spider-Man is with his eyes, even if they are technically covered. This design gives us nothing to latch onto, and makes Raven look like some boring woman with a grocery bag on her head. Number 6, Lobo's New 52 Makeover. Another odd choice made by the folks at DC during the New 52 reboot is what they did to poor Lobo. Lobo is a character that is beloved for his excess. He was designed to be a parody of the 90s grimdark in comics, but readers didn't catch the joke and he was beloved by fans and received his own book. In a move that no one saw coming, the New 52 introduced a leaner, more refined version of the character, which seemed to fly in the face of his previous iteration. To add insult to injury, it was revealed that this was the real Lobo, and that the Lobo everyone actually enjoyed was an imposter. Kinda like that Simpsons episode, Principal and the Pauper. If DC was going to go to the trouble of introducing a new version of the character who looks nothing like Lobo and doesn't act like Lobo, why not just make a new 
character? Was this decision made with the intent of making the least amount of people possible happy? Number 5. Captain America's Nomad Look In the fallout of the Watergate scandal, Captain America became disillusioned with the United States and decided that he could no longer be the Star Spangled Man. He decided to become a man of no country and instead help save the world as Nomad. He replaced his Captain America costume with a costume that somehow manages to be equal parts way too much and not enough. He wears a simple black spandex bodysuit with yellow gloves, belt and boots, and a black and yellow cape. Pretty basic, pretty boring. The only thing memorable about this outfit is the extremely deep cut V that goes all the way down to his navel. Granted, compared to his usual outfit, nothing was going to look as interesting, but this feels like a generic dollar store hero. Not something befitting of one of the founding Avengers. I guess it makes sense as an outfit when you consider that he was wearing it as a form of protest. Number 4. Wonder Woman's Karate Makeover In the late 1960s, the men at DC Comics decided that it was time to give their most iconic female superhero a feminist redesign. Unfortunately, rather than asking any women what they thought, they decided the best way to accomplish this was to take Wonder Woman's powers away. The thought process was that Wonder Woman was beholden to a male god, Zeus, so to make her more independent, she should learn karate to fight her enemies. They would be showing that she was a strong woman who could use hard work and determination to be a hero rather than relying on powers given to her by a man. What they failed to realize is that Wonder Woman was already a feminist icon and female readers liked having a powerful character they could look up to. You'll also notice they didn't feel the need to take away Superman's powers in order to prove that he was a capable hero. Instead of her classic red and gold armor with her signature tiara and lasso of truth, she was given a generic white outfit. There's really nothing to say about it other than that. It's boring and a step backwards for her both fashion wise and as a character. Thankfully, this caught the attention of a real life feminist icon, Gloria Steinem, who had grown up on the comics. She decried the removal of a strong female role model and began a successful campaign to return Wonder Woman to her full power. When later asked about the changes he made to the character, Denny O'Neill was quoted as saying, Oh boy, did I screw that up. I thought I was on the side of feminism. Sorry. Number 3. Electric Superman Being the first superhero who has looked mostly the same since his creation in 1938, Superman is a difficult character to redesign. Whatever look you give him, it needs to be distinctly Superman. Some of his most popular redesigns include the black suit, the 2011 New 52 reboot, which got rid of his red trunks and gave him a high collar, and my personal favorite favorite, the Rebirth outfit, which is just the classic suit with a red and gold belt, allowing the character to keep his classic color scheme while still modernizing the look of it. Despite this, it is never long before Superman ends up in his classic suit, red underwear included. Perhaps his most infamous redesign came in 1998, when the creatives at DC Comics decided to challenge the Man of Steel by giving him new powers. The logic being that having completely new abilities would be like forcing the character to learn to walk again. Superman was given electric energy based powers and as a result, was given a new look consisting of a blue and white bodysuit with an electrical theme and blue skin. To add to the weirdness, he was split into two beings, with a second Superman having essentially the same suit with a red color palette. Playing off the classic Elseworlds story, Superman Red and Superman Blue, from Superman Volume 1, number 162. It's not a horrible outfit, but it's just too drastic a departure for Superman, with nothing but the S shield to ground the character in his long history. Number 2. Sue Storm's 90s Outfit Marvel's first family, the Fantastic Four, have had a lot of redesigns over the years, but tend to stick relatively close to their original blue bodysuits. Compared to a lot of superheroines, Sue has usually been able to walk the line with the way she is drawn by artists, so that she is obviously attractive, but not usually overly sexualized. Unfortunately, her 90s look doesn't really manage to thread this needle, and ends up being more revealing than any story reasons could ever really justify. While most female costumes in comic books are redesigned to be more practical over time, this redesign took away Sue's pants, giving her white stockings and blue garters. Her midriff was completely exposed, and perhaps most notably, the four emblem on her chest is cut out to create a number-shaped boob window. This outfit feels like something out of an adult film parody of the Fantastic Four, and is so over-sexualized that it ends up just looking ridiculous, not to mention the bizarre tan lines Sue would end up with. Number 1. Hawkeye's Skirt Usually when a superhero gets a massive redesign, it is to either modernize their look or give them more dignified look. A great example of this is Robin. For years, he had the pantsless pixie boot look, but when Tim Drake took over the mantle, he was given an updated costume that kept the basic look and color scheme, but gave him a more dignified look. Pants. It gave him pants. I like to think of Hawkeye as the anti-Robin, as for a while, his costumes got lamer and lamer every few years. His original look was fine. A blue and purple tunic with a purple mask and a bit of a Batman thing going on. To tie the look together, he had a big H on his head, because, you know, Hawkeye starts with an H. This look changed 
changed drastically when he took on the superhero identity of Goliath. He basically started wearing a pro wrestling outfit with a weightlifting belt and a weird shoulder strap with a strip of fabric whose only purpose seemed to be to cover his nipples. This is a bad redesign, but his next outfit is even worse, consisting of nothing but an open vest, a headband, and a very short skirt. After a while, they gave up on giving Hawkeye a cool costume, and now he basically just wears a t-shirt with a purple arrow on the chest. Maybe that's for the best. Any other redesigns make you want to dry heave at the sight of them? Let us know in the comments below, and remember to like and subscribe for more Top 10 Nerd.